How's it going guys? Past level question for surgery for 2CK, if you're studying for step one, difficult gastro question. You're obviously gonna have to ace 2CK eventually. I'll tell you some high yield points regarding these differentials, okay? Not waste your time. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like, I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical, links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip, 50 year old man, well-controlled type 2 diabetes mellitus, comes to the ED 24 hours after abdo pain, temperature 102 Fahrenheit, examination shows scleral ictus. laboratory studies show white blood cells elevated 16,000 per microliter, should be 4 to 11, glucose super fucking elevated at 600, should be 72 to 99 fasting, long discussion about glucose I don't want to get into right now, point is super fucking high as I just said, total bilirubin elevated 5 milligrams per deciliter, uh, normal is around 1. Direct bilirubin elevated at 2 milligrams per deciliter should be around 0 0.1. Something I want to quickly note that's exceedingly important for 2CK in general and also for pathologic jaundice in pediatrics questions is that direct bilirubin is considered elevated when it's greater than 10% of total. So you look at the question here and you say, well, I don't know how to interpret bilirubin. Okay, well, we know total bilirubin should be around 1, so clearly total bilirubin is high. And then you say, well, direct bilirubin is greater than 10% of total. Okay, so if it's under 0 0.5 in this case, you'd say that could be something prehepatic, like hemolysis as an example. But clearly, direct bilirubin is greater than 10% of total in this case. So that could point toward an obstructive jaundice. Okay, not always, but usually the case. There are occasional hemolysis questions where Direct can creep up, can be increased, okay, more difficult questions. But in general, the way you interpret these bilirubin values, you say total bilirubin is high, direct greater than 10% of total, likely obstructive jaundice, post-hepatic, okay? ALP elevated at 320, normal range 50 to 150. Amylase is normal, okay? So question wants to know the most likely diagnosis. Let's just whip to the answer choice here. So I wasn't going to waste time. Choice say. Biliary cirrhosis, aka primary biliary cirrhosis, wrong fucking answer. This is going to be a woman, 20s to 50s, who has generalized pruritus, jaundice, high cholesterol, and they will tell you high ALP, high bilirubin, and they often like mentioning autoimmune disease either in the patient or in a sibling, because autoimmune diseases go together. They can say she has SLE or type 1 diabetes, her brother has RA. Okay, and then you're going to do anti-mitochondrial antibodies as next best step in diagnosis, and you're going to do a liver biopsy ultimately, and you can treat with ursodeoxycholic acid. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, cholangitis is the correct answer. This is ascending cholangitis presumably, not primary sclerosing cholangitis, the latter which we see in IBD, usually you see. Uh, but ascending cholangitis, bacterial from the GI tract. So this is what you need to know. When you get a question and you have charco triad for cholangitis, which is going to be abdominal pain, fever, and jaundice. Now, some students instantaneously will say, OMG, isn't it supposed to be right upper quadrant pain with jaundice? No, it's fucking wrong. Okay, so there's two CK questions where they'll just say abdo pain. Nothing about right upper quadrant pain. They'll just say abdo pain, fever, and jaundice. And that's charco triad for cholangitis. Exceedingly high yield. Now what I did is I'm being friendly here. I gave you literally a one fucking liner, a two liner with some lab values. And I said, what's the diagnosis? You know what they do on 2CK? They give you a 12, 15 line massive fucking paragraph. Tons of lab values. Students are reading the question for like seven minutes. Run the convenience store while they're still answering the question. So it's like... All you have to do is just say, you know, when you look at these answer choices, especially when, when you see their hepatobiliary answers and you see cholangitis is one of them, you want to say, is there charcoal triad here? Which there is. And you can say, boom, it's just cholangitis, okay? And USMLE wants ERCP as the next best step. In reality, you would do an ultrasound first because it's cheap and easy. Uh, but USMLE, they'll just have ERCP as the answer. I've seen that on the NBME form. When you address these hepatobiliary diagnoses, okay, so of course ERCP for diagnosis, but they often want a triad of NPO, which means nothing by mouth, uh, NG tube, and IV saline, okay, for a lot of these diagnoses. So real quick, so I was going to cover uh, high yield points here. So cholangitis, by the way, for those of you studying for step one, it means inflammation of the bile ducts, okay, self-explanatory. 
Choice C, cholecystitis, wrong fucking answer. That's going to be inflammation of the gallbladder, pretty much always due to an obstruction from a gallstone. This is going to be cholecystitis plus fever. So if you just get biliary colic, okay, colicky, abdo pain, sure, it can be right upper quadrant, fat, 40s, female fertile, not necessarily that demographic. You can see it in patients with hereditary spherocytosis as well, patients who have pigment stones uh, due to RBC turnover. And then you just add a fever on top of it. We now call that cholecystitis. And you're going to diagnose with ultrasound first. If the ultrasound is negative or equivocal, you're going to do a HIDA scan. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, hepatitis, wrong answer. So, I mean, in hepatitis, you could sometimes have an obstructive bilirubin pattern. Absolutely. Hepatitis is known for being sometimes having uh, an elevated direct bilirubin, or it doesn't have to be. Okay, so it can be variable. It's the elevated ALP that tells us we actually have a bile duct obstruction. Okay? You say, well, why is the glucose elevated? Sympathetic activation, and the white blood cells as well. Sympathetic activation in the setting of stress. Cholangitis, infective, ascending, so white blood cells elevated. But even if this were, let's say, primary sclerosing cholangitis in the setting of UC, we could easily have white blood cells elevated. Okay, so sympathetic activation, SIR, systemic inflammatory response syndrome. Uh, we can get elevated white blood cells, okay, elevated glucose and diabetes. Hepatitis, wrong fucking answer. Pancreatitis, and we clearly don't have elevated ALT, AST. They don't mention anything about that here. Pancreatitis, wrong answer. So I said acute on chronic. I mean, amylase is not elevated acutely, so we know it's not acute pancreatitis. Okay, so you say, well, why not lipase? I've seen just isolated amylase in NBME questions. For some reason, they'll just give amylase. So it's clearly not elevated. And you say, well, what about chronic pancreatitis? That just means steatorrhea in a patient who has alcoholism a patient who has uh, chronic pancreatic insufficiency, such as cystic fibrosis, history of pancreatectomy. So steatorrhea, okay, patient who has alcoholism, that's pancreatic burnout from history of many prior episodes of acute pancreatitis. And you would not have an elevation of pancreatic enzymes if that were the case. But clearly there's nothing about steatorrhea in this question, no alcoholism, not the classic demographic. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. Make to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.